हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट ए फ्रेश चैप्टर कॉल्ड लाइट यू नो लाइट इज ए सेंस वी कैन सी द ऑब्जेक्ट्स अराउंड अस बिकॉज यूजिंग आवर आईज बट If I switch off all the lights of the room, you will not able to see those objects because now there is no light falling on the objects and reflecting the light in the eyes. So for us to see the objects, either the light should come, should produce from the objects like sun, flame, torch, and enter our eye, or light should fall on the objects and should get reflected from those objects and fall in our eye so these are the two main essential things required we should have a normal eyesight and light from the objects should fall in our eye when the light enters the eye it forms an image we will be learning on a screen called retina which is photo receptive so from the retina a nerve called optic nerves goes to the brain and this information is fed to the brain which interprets the signal that has come to the retina is it okay then we will be learning about loss of reflection the various technical terms involved in this loss and also we will ca carry out an activity to verify this loss of reflections we will be learning that there are two types of reflection regular and irregular we will also carry out an ex experiment and see day to day devices in which reflected light can be reflected again so they form multiple images a simple application of this in is in a toy called kaleidoscope we will also learn dispersion of of light and that about we learn in brief about the human eye and the care that we should take and uh, also how visually impaired persons can use various optical and non optical aids so that they will also understand the the basic things around uh, around them which are kept okay so let us now start as i told you there are two types of objects luminous produce light and emit light like sun but we we are also able to see moon moon does not produce light but its light falls on the moon and it reflects the light which enters our eye and we are able to see is it all right then what is light light is an electromagnetic wave we will be learning in detail in 12th standard what is electromagnetic wave it is a type of energy you can say why i am telling it is an energy you can easily recognize this because when a bulb glows it glows because you have passed electricity through the bulb so electrical energy gets converted to heat energy the filament becomes red hot and emits light so light has come from electrical energy via heat energy okay otherwise when you go in hot sun your head becomes warm why because the light rays are falling on the head we keep various things for drying in hot sun so light is an energy it evaporates the water now what is the important property of light we call it rectilinear propagation of light it means that light travels in straight lines now speed of light is much more than speed of sound speed of light is 3 multiplied by 10 to 8 meter per second whereas speed of sound is only 340 meters per second we can recognize this because you might have seen that when there is a lightning first you see the light and after some time you see you hear the sound 
so the time gap between light and sound is because sound is traveling at a slow speed is it all right so in case a light is blocked by certain opaque object means through which light cannot pass like this is suppose a pole or a tree through which light cannot pass i will this is a light source i would see that because the light cannot pass from here i will get a shadow here so if you draw this light light is able to go above this so here you will get a shadow so whenever light is not able is obstructed by an opaque object it forms shadow okay so now let us try to understand what is reflection now this i have taken a plane mirror it can be a plane mirror it can be any object so my light source here above a so light is coming through a very small slit hole small hole pin hole from a so this will call a ray a few rays together is called a beam so ao is a ray which is falling on the plane mirror at o then the point at which it falls o is called point of incidence and ao the ray which is falling is called incident ray so ao is incident ray o is point of incidence after falling at o it is going along ob so ob is called reflected ray now at point o you draw perpendicular to this plane mirror so this is called normal so o n is normal so now to measure this angle a o n which is angle of incidence angle between incident ray and normal is angle of incidence and angle between reflected ray and normal is angle of reflection if i measure both these angles you will find that both these angles are equal in magnitude so i is equal to r okay this is angle of incident this is angle of reflection so i have explained through the various terms now let us read which i have written in the next slide the light ray which strikes any surface is called incident ray point at which it strikes is called point of incidence the ray that comes back from the surface after reflection in the same medium is known as reflected ray line perpendicular to the mirror at point of incident is called normal angle between incident ray and normal is called angle of incidence angle between reflected ray and normal is called angle of reflection now what are laws of reflection angle of incident is always equal to angle of reflection incident ray the normal at the point of incident and the reflected ray or lie in the same plane now we'll do an experiment to verify this here i have just shown you you see this incident ray this reflected ray and normal are in the same plane of this slide o n is also o n a o and o b all are in this same slide it's not that any ray is outside is coming outside the paper or outside the slide or going inside the slide or is in a tilted condition all are in the same plane is it all right so then this i have explained to you now let us try to do an experiment now here at this point here i have got a source of light pin hole source of light how, how it can be created you take a comb and you cover it with paper and keep only small opening at the keep only small opening like this is a comb these are the various here so keep only this in the middle keep a small opening here so that and this is covered with black paper or all, all around so that from our very small opening the light will enter or we have got a source of light called ray light where we get a small beam of light a ray of light so ao is my ray of light okay so or you can take a paper make a pin hole and throw the light through from a torch so you will get a 
ray of light AO. Then you can see this white color here. If you are doing this experiment in a slightly dark room, you will easily be able to see a white light here. This is a plane mirror. Then you mark the point O and you mark the any point on the incident ray. So I marked it as A. Join AO. So at O, you draw a normal 90 degree. Then you will also see a light going in this direction. So this is the reflected light. So OB is the reflected ray. AO is the incident ray. O and is the normal. In the book, you see the diagram. You will see this white color light here and also here some white color light here. That is image of this light. Similarly, image of OB would be here. So yeah, also some the images in the plane mirror. Now, you have mark point B, you have mark point A, you have drawn a normal. If you measure this angle, you will find that these angles are equal. Now you do this experiment by having different angles. You, cha you change the location of this pinhole, you will get various eyes. So for always you will find that I is equal to R. So this verifies my one law that angle of incident is equal to angle of reflection. Now you will find that all these three are in this sheet of paper. Because what I done, I have taken a paper and fixed on the drawing board. All these three are in the paper. Now what you do, somewhere from here, you fold the paper down or fold the paper up you will find that our reflected ray will not be on this paper which is up or down. So it shows that reflected ray cannot be in any other plane. It would be only from O to the place where it is in the same plane. Is it alright? So now you bring the paper back to the original condition, flat condition, you will find that the light ray has come in this paper up to the end. So this shows that incident ray, reflected ray and normal are in the same plane of paper. Okay, so this verifies my loss of reflection. Now you see here, this is a plane mirror I have kept. OM is an incident ray. Then Incid angle of incident is the angle between normal and incident ray. Now that angle is zero because my normal and incident ray are on the same line. So R would also be zero. So my reflected ray will, will go in the direction of MO. So this will be my reflected ray direction. This is my incident ray direction. Now if I produce it here, now you take OA incident ray, take OB incident ray, draw normal, measure this I, make R, so when you produce backward, you will find that all are meeting at I. So I is called image of object at O. So this is my image of object at O. Now you see my, this is one ray, second ray, third ray, my all reflected rays are divergent. Means if I produce, they will never meet. But when I produce backward, they are meeting. So whenever rays are produced backward and they meet, it is called a virtual image. So I is the virtual image. And I can't get the real image because my rays are not actually meeting. Is it all right? Now, I will observe that in case I have got an extended object here, the size of this image would be the same size of this object and it would be erect. Like if this is the object with arrow up, image will also be with arrow up. So the image formed in plane mirror is erect, same size, but lateral inverted. Now what do we mean by lateral inverted? Lateral inverted means that right hand would appear left hand, left hand will appear right hand, right ear will appear left ear and so on. Like I have written this letter P, my P would appear like this. It is erect. This is the head. Here also this is the head is the top. This is the bottom portion. Here also the same bottom portion. But why it is like this? Because if my mirror is here, if this is my mirror, then you will find that this is nearer to mirror. 
So this has to be nearer to mirror. So my P would appear like this. This is this straight line is farther from mirror. So this is farther from mirror. So my P would appear like this. That is why in case you want to read in plane mirror, you should write in laterally inverted manner. So you will find that in ambulances they write in a laterally inverted manner so the driver in the front will be able to see, read clearly when he sees from his mirror. Is it all right? So, so what are the characteristics of image in a plane mirror? Erect, same size, lateral inverted, image is as far behind as object is in front. The distance mi is equal to distance mo. And it is a virtual image. Okay. So, this completes this characteristics of the plane mirror. Now we will learn about multiple images. Now let us see how we form multiple images. We have understood what is reflected light. So now reflected light, if it falls from on other object, then it again gets reflected. Whether it falls on plane mirror or any other object, it, it will again get reflected. So this process can continue. So means ref reflected light behaves like light. I will give you a simple example. In your hair salon, to show you the back of the head, the barber keeps a small mirror behind your back. See, this is the front mirror, front mirror, very big mirror. And you are sitting here. This is a back. Then he will keep one some mirror behind this here. He will keep a mirror here. Then this back of the head will form image in a small mirror here. And then this image will form another image in the front mirror. And you can see the back here. So you can see the back here. So the reflected ray has formed this image and this reflected ray when it became incident ray to the front mirror it again formed an image. So this is called multiple reflection. Okay. So, so you can have two, two mirrors as such at any angle. Suppose these are the two plane mirrors. And this angle between them is theta degree then it will form some image here, it will form some image here. Then this image will again will behave like an object and form an image in this mirror. And the image formed here, so this thing will go on. So how to know how many images get formed? For that I am giving you a formula n is equal to 360 upon theta minus 1. But theta is the angle. So if angle is 90 degree, means two mirrors are like this. This is one mirror, this is the second mirror. The angle will be 90. If you are keeping an object here, then it will form three images. 360 upon 90 is 4, minus 1 is 3. So this formula you should learn. And in case 360 upon theta is odd integer, then also image is this. If the object is kept symmetrical, in case the object is kept asymmetrical, then one extra image will get formed and you will get n equal to 360 upon theta. Okay, but normally in your exams, the question may might be based only on this formula. So this formula is to remember. Number of images formed is 360 upon theta minus 1. This number, 360 upon theta has to be E1. In case if it is odd and object is cut asymmetrical, then one extra image you should add means that minus 1 will go off. Okay. In case 360 upon theta is a fraction, then the integral part would be the integral. Suppose I am getting 
So images would be 4. Is it all right? Now, let us try to see multiple images in periscope. Now you see this is a periscope. So this is an op opening here for the light to enter and from here you will be observing. So now suppose you are in submarine. So you are under water. Up to here is water. And this is just outside the water surface. Now you want to observe that which ships are sailing in water. So if, if from the ship the light ray will come and will enter. This is a plane mirror. So it will come here. Now this is uh, 90 degree and this mirror is kept at 45 degree. So it will come at 90 degree here. Okay. Because the normal is here. This is our normal. So this angle would be 45. So this will also be 45. So the light ray will come here. It will strike now again, uh, again this second mirror. And this is also kept such that it is at 45 degree. This is 90. This is 45. So light ray will go horizontal. And you will be able to see the object here because the light is coming from the object to the eye. So this is called periscope. So using periscope we can see at this at different elevations. Okay. So this is a periscope. And now we will also now we will learning another toy instrument called kaleidoscope. This is also using multiple images. Now, kaleidoscope is also working on the principle of multiple images formed when mirrors are kept at, at an angle to one another. Now, you listen to its construction. We will take three. We will take three rectangular plane mirrors. So, we are taking three plane mirrors. Okay, like suppose this is a plane mirror rectangle. As I have written here size say 15 by 4 centimeter. So this is 15, this is by 4. So such three mirrors I will take. Now with these three mirrors I will form a prism. So this is one mirror, another mirror I will keep at an angle 60 and third mirror I will keep as the base. So this is one base mirror, this is the second mirror, this is the third mirror. So I will make a triangular prism. So this is inside is having air. So it is hollow triangular prism I will make by using three plane mirrors, you should keep in mind that my reflecting surface should be inside. So my reflecting surfaces are inside. Okay. Now after making this prism, I will take a cylinder. Suppose this I have taken a cylinder. And this cylinder is slightly bigger than this prism so that I can fix my prism in this cylinder. So, so fix this prism in this cylinder. Now both its ends are open. So in one side, in one end you take a cardboard, you take a cardboard and make a small hole here so that from which you can observe and fix this cardboard to one end. So that now from this hole you will be able to, you, you, you would be viewing the patterns. Okay. So, now on the other end, you take a glass plate, transparent glass plate and fix it inside so that it will touch the this prism. So, there is another glass plate here. And on the top of the glass plate, we will keep few colored food bangles, different colored bangles pieces we will keep. Then we will cover that glass plate with another glass plate such that I, my bangles are free to move. My bangles are free to move. Now, when I will observe from the end where there is a hole, I, I, because there are colored bangles inside this reflecting surface, so multiple images will get formed. It will be symmetrical because its angles are 60 degree all around. So, symmetrical colorful pattern will be able to see. And now the rotate the cylinder. Now bangles will take different places, so the pattern will change. So in this manner, you can have view various patterns. So initially, initially it was used as a toy by boys, by young ch children to see the various pattern. 
and now it is also used by certain designers of wall papers or fabrics so that they will get idea of what are the good patterns they will see and whichever pattern they like so they will try to copy that pattern so this is a kaleidoscope working on multiple images formed by mirrors okay so now we'll go to next topic that is dispersion of light or i would say sunlight is white color or it is colored because sometimes i see various colors in the sky which are called violet indigo blue green yellow orange red so sunlight is made of white light or color light so now let us try to answer this question so what i have taken this is my glass prism transparent glass prism so my sun is somewhere here so i am allowing white light to pass through this prism so my white light is coming and passing through the prism in the other end i have kept a white screen this is a white screen i would see here seven colors written from violet bottom and red top so i have written here we've got so i will see seven colors so how from where the seven colors have come they have come from this white light so when white light is passing through a glass prism then at the other end i get seven colors so means the seven colors are made up of from white light so 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 means these are the constituents of white light now the question may come to the mind why it has got split up here it was white why white has not come from outside the answer is that the velocity of various colors of light is different in different media in glass the velocity for violet and red are different but in air in air or strictly in vacuum their velocities are same so when their velocities are same all move together so they mix one up with one another and they form white when the several colors are mixed they form white but now when they are passing through glass their velocities are different so the light which is having maximum velocity will come out first and then second most third most of source the colors get split up we will be learning in this in detail that the velocities are different in media except in air or vacuum they are same that is why there is a natural phenomena of rainbow in which we can see the seven colors now there where is the prism rainbow normal is formed just after the monsoon after the rain so rain shower has come now air contains many water droplets so this water droplets acts as a prism and the light sunlight when it is passing through the prism will get split up and uh, we will see the seven, seven colors in the sky now this phenomena of splitting up light into its constituent colors splitting up a white light into seven colors is called dispersion of light so this is very important you should learn what is dispersion of light it is splitting up of white light into its constituent of seven colors it's called dispersion of light is it okay now the spectrum that i op obtained on the screen so on the screen i will get seven colors that is called spectrum so seven colors that i am getting on the screen is called spectrum and the phenomena of splitting of light into seven colors is called dispersion is it okay so i so here is my spectrum on the screen now i can also make a prism in in a sim if you don't have a prism you can make it in this manner to take a bowl so this is a bowl and bowl is containing water now to insert a prism uh, sorry a plane mirror in mirror inside this so this bowl is containing water and i have inserted a mirror inside it now here i have made a opening so that my sunlight is falling on this bowl containing water now when sunlight will pop pop pass through this water then this water mirror will form a 
prism and the light that will come out will get a dispersion will take place and I will get violet to red so here I have kept a white screen so this is my white screen from which I have, adju I have adjusted the screen so that the uh, light which is coming out from this pre uh, water prism is forming spectrum on this screen is it all right so this are the this is about so what we can conclude that sunlight is made of a white light but when it passes through prism it gets split into its constituent colors which are seven we've got okay so we'll go proceed further now so we, so far we have learned physics now let us try to understand how our eye is made up of how eye is able to sense the light and everything so first of all you know eye is eyeball is spherical in shape so i've got an eyeball like this Okay, so this is my eyeball. I will draw it a bigger one. Let me see if I've got a space bigger one. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. So this is my spherical eyeball, and I will explain to. Now you see this out here is my that white portion of the eye called sclera, and this projection outside. The eye is having a small projection outside, which you see. So this projection outside is called cornea. This is transparent. Is it all right? So inside is. This circular part is sclera, but then sclera ends here and projection comes outside, and there I am having a transparent layer called cornea. Cornea. Now, so sclera is a dense fibrous opaque white covering along the eyeball. Okay. so it is stuff so that it will protect the eye then cornea is the front bulging part it will protect the eyes from the foreign matter uh, but its other function is that there will be a refraction taking place so when the light passes through cornea here also refraction will take place means the light direction will change so that it will fall on the uh, lens which we are studying which we will be studying now Now you see. Here in the sense, in the uh, this is a cornea outside. I here I've got a convex lens, and this convex lens is suspended by ciliary muscles. Convex lens is suspended by ciliary muscles, so that my light, which is entering, will pass through the lens. now for the light to pass there is an opening in the cornea if this is the cornea here there is an opening so light passes through this opening and this opening is called pupil opening is called pupil the light enters through the pupil and passes through the lens now this this pupil is and on, on on both the ends we have got iris and this opening is due to the position of the iris if the iris is inward means like curtain is closed pupil opening would be less and in case iris is upwards or on the towards the eyeball then the opening would be more so more light will enter so the opening of pupil is not fixed it is controlled by iris so as per the requirement means as per the availability of light the opening of pupil will automatically get adjusted so that is why in case 
who are sitting in the dark room as soon as light comes then the pupil tries to close so for some fraction of a second you will find bit disturbance so the eyes will get closed because pupil is getting adjusted to its closing position so that necessary amount of only light should enter the eye is it all right so then now between lens and the between lens and this cornea there is a liquid that is called acute humor and between lens and this and a part which here is a retina this uh, lens opposite and this end is retina retina is a layer which is having rods and cones which are cells which are sensitive to light cones are sensitive to colored lights whereas rods are sensitive to intensity of light okay so in human eye we have got both rods and cones and so now the light which is passing through the lens now between lens and this end of the eyeball is a liquid called vitreous humor here we have got vitreous humor and this liquid will give the shape to the eyeball it will press with a large force on all the sides so that you will get a eyeball in the op- fl- uh, spherical sh- shape it is having very high uh, den- uh, density and it is viscous liquid like honey with the acute humor is like water is it all right so these are the important parts of the eye now let us try to read them so sclera is the dense you can refer to the diagram given in your textbook sclera is the white part all around the eye except at cornea position cornea is bulging part of the eye it is transparent acute humor is a liquid between lens and cornea iris is a muscular diaphragm so that it gives some all some opening that opening is called pupil so iris controls the pupil then lens is after the pupil it is a convex lens it is suspended by ciliary muscles this is suspended by ciliary muscles then vitreous humor i told you it is a thick liquid between lens and eyeball retina is a photosensitive layer at the in the eyeball other end of the eyeball then fr- from retina there is an optic nerve that is going to brain in retina there is an optic like here which i have shown it here so here the, this is an optic nerve this is a optic nerve this is retina this is cornea so here my message is going to the brain through the optic nerve now wherever optic nerve is getting connected to retina at that place there are no cells so in case image gets formed at that point you will not be able to see so that point is called a blind spot so at the junction of optic nerve and retina there are no cells sensory cells means no rods no cones so you will not be able to see that is called blind spot okay so this is the various parts of the eye which and you should also be able to draw the diagram as given in the figure in the textbook okay now let us learn some other things persistence of vision see now when you observing an object even if the object is removed then for one upon 16th of a second its image will remain in the retina so this is called persistence of vision it means even after the object is removed its impression would be there for one upon 16th second so in case before its impression gets over i bring another image then both the images would be together so I, it would appear to me as if the object is moving so in your 
videos and all those things we are projecting images at a speed faster than 16 images per second so the, the object appears to be moving okay you know what is the purpose of eyelid to protect any foreign matter entering the eye and also you can shut out the light completely in the night when you sleep you shut out the light completely by closing the eyelids then now you see if this is the lens i can keep an object here i can keep the object here i can keep the object here but my retina position is fixed here this is my retina so always the image has to get formed at retina so if object is at different positions image will form at different position so that image always gets formed at retina so i change the focal length of this lens by this my my this ciliary muscles so ciliary muscles changes the focal length of the lens so that image is always formed at retina wherever is the object kept but it has got a limitation i cannot keep the object at a distance less than 25 cm so this is called least distance of distinct vision distinct means clear so least distance of distinct vision is 25 cm from 25 cm to infinity if you keep the object you can see without straining the eye is it all right so let us proceed further now you should take care of the eyes so first of all in case doctors advise you that you should use spectacles you should use them as per his instructions then you should see that you don't study or work in dim light and neither it should be very high light you should never see the sun or very uh, welding sparks and all those things which are having good amount of light because in case that good amount of light enters or uh, uh, eye it can damage the retina which is photosensitive laser light and all those things you should not see directly okay and in case any foreign particles has entered the eye you are not supposed to rub the eye but wash it with water so that it gets removed because by rubbing it can scratch the cornea or uh, sclerotic layer okay and you should always keep the book at about more than 25 cm so that uh, you are not straining the eye you should eat good amount of vitamin a food items such as raw carrots green vegetables milk curd butter etc fruits like papaya mango which will give vitamin a that will improve your eye strength now few defects that normally occurs in eye i have listed it here like some persons can see objects close to them but they cannot see far away objects like you are not able to read the bo board in case of sitting in the last bench but you are able to read the book so in such cases when you go to doctor he will get examine the eye and he must uh, you will have to wear concave lens of suitable focal length and reverse can also take place that you are not able to read the book but you are able to read the board so in such cases you have to wear convex lens of suitable focal length as a person becomes old the lens loses its transparency and becomes foggy or yellowish in color so normal light is not able to pass through the lens and strike the and form the image that retina so in such cases this is called cataract and in such cases doctor removes that foggy lens by surgery and in and place their artificial lens lens made in factories which is foldable and suspended there so that now you are able to see as such there is good uh, due to good improvement in uh, technology 
Now these procedures have become quite simpler and safer. Initially it used to be a surgery, but now it is done quite easily. Okay. Now there are certain unfortunate persons, including children, who cannot see. Some are by birth and some lose eyesight due to some accident or disease. So that they can also do understand to some extent this vision, various aids are provided. One are optical aids, other are non-optical. Optical aids we have discussed that a person is not able to see, use the lens of suitable focal length. Nowadays, contact lens is also available, uh, magnifiers use, and to see very far away objects, we have made telescopes. So, this is called optical aids. Now, non optical aids can be visual aids, which will magnify the words, so that if a person can see magnified words, he will be able to read. Okay, or we can increase the intensity of light to make him suitable for reading. Or we have got textual aids, means a person will be able to read by using a slate and stylus which are having projected points. That is called braille system. So, using braille system, he can get the communication, we can communicate with him. Or we have got auditory aids, you can make cassettes for him, give him information through cassettes, tape recorders, talking books are, are available, even talking calculators are there, talking computers are there, so that they will get, they will get at least the information. And there is a braille system in which we can write the books and they are able to read by touching. They have got good sense of touching. So, there are 63 characters in this braille system and they are having two vertical rows, three uh, uh, this, two these vertical rows. Here there are, we can have punch here, 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 uh, here, here, here. Wherever we punch, the other side paper will come out. So, by they are able to feel of touch, they are able to know and they are able to read. So, like we have got alphabets, so each alphabet or each character they call, because character can be alphabet, it can be few alphabets like and, and and such things, so so that they can by feel of touch they are able to read this braille system and get the information. Instead of reading the book through eye, they are reading it now by feel of touch. So, many devices have been formed like typewriter and printing machine which will punch the cardboards, small thin cardboards and write in the braille language. Is it okay? So, in this finishes our chapter of light. In case there any difficulty, you can uh, write them in comment. I will answer them. And uh, if you liked my uh, notes and teaching method, you can subscribe to the channel and like and press the bell icon so that when next chapter is uploaded, you will get the notification. Thank you.